Hey guys, welcome back to Young Americans Abroad, your best place for weekly content on young American soccer players playing overseas. My name is Austin Van Churn. And my name is Patrick Ferry. And welcome to our show. So guys, we have a jam-packed episode today, including a great performance from Captain America over in Germany. And we also have some trouble in paradise with one of our favorite Scottish Yankees. And finally, two players moving back from Europe to the MLS. All that and more in this episode. So the first player we want to talk about this week is Christian Pulisic. And Christian had a great substitute appearance for Dortmund this week in their 3-1 win over Stuttgart. And he came on in the 78th minute got an assist as well as a goal, Pat. So it was a very, you know, strong substitute appearance in those 12 minutes. Um, You know, the assist was kind of a jumbled ball in the box that kind of fell to Christian. He took a touch around a defender, and then the ball kind of fell perfectly to Paco Alcacer to, you know, shoot on goal. And it looked like Christian was kind of, like, looking to take the shot, Pat. But um, Paco was there before him, and you know, fired the ball into the net and Dortmund went up 2-1 at that point. And then uh, later on in extra time, Christian uh, made a nice, what we want to call, I guess, Pat, a banana run. I don't know if that's a... I like it, yeah. Kick. I know there's a banana kick, but yeah, the run, it was shaped like a banana. So I think that's a pretty good... Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was a nice, like, it was like, it was like a nice, um, not diagonal run. What, what would it be? A nice, like... Uh, Curved, yeah. Like a- yeah, like... Like a, I was gonna say, what's the opposite of vertical? Horizontal. Yeah, yeah. I sound stupid. <laughs> nice horizontal run in the box um, to stay on side, and I believe he received a nice pass from Mario Goza. I guess it was like first time, and Christian, you know, first time shot the ball right across the goalkeeper um, after making that run, and the ball, you know, just slowly rolled right in front of the goalkeeper into the net and sealed Dortmund's, you know, big win on uh, over the weekend. You know, that three-one win against the Stuttgart and. You know, it was big for them. You know, Bayern ended up destroying Wolfsburg uh, 6-0 this weekend. Or John Brooks. Yeah, that was not his best performance of the season. But, you know, Bayern's, I guess, coming back with a vengeance now in the second half of the season. So, yeah, tough, tough, tough performance from him. Uh, but, yeah, but awesome. it sounds like uh, Christian. So. Yeah, it sounds like Christian really made, you know, Captain America really came to the rescue there during this crunch time. <laughs> That's that's very true. That's uh that's what he did. You know, he helped Dortmund uh get the three points on the day. You know, when he came into the game in that seventy eighth minute, um Dortmund were tied one one with Stuttgart and Stuttgart's in the relegation playoff position right now at the bottom of the Bundesliga table. So it was gonna be a bad result for Dortmund if something, you know, didn't happen in those final ten minutes or so. And Christian was able to play a, a big part in, in both of the, the two goals that put Dortmund ahead. So you can't really ask for much more on the day. <laughs> no, no, you can't at all, Austin. I'm wondering, just uh, obviously it was unfortunate with uh, Tottenham in the Champions League uh, being knocked out there, yeah. but um, with you know mainly just you know this focus in line, just get this Bundesliga title. Um, this performance obviously helped, but do you see Christian, um, you know, possibly be you know inserted in the starting lineup there and being more used in this uh, the substitute role? Um, you know, just just kind of your thoughts, I guess. Yeah, it's it's a good question. Um... You know, Dortmund have struggled, obviously, recently. And Jaden Sancho has kind of had a, a part to play in some of those struggles. Um, you know, Christian Pulisic did come in for, I believe, Rafael Guerrero, who started the game for Dortmund. So it'll be interesting to see, I guess, what formation Dortmund roll out next game. They started Marius Wolf, I believe, on the right, if I'm not mistaken. And then Jaden Sancho on the left. And then kind of had um, Guerrero uh, somewhere there in the midfield um, so it'd be interesting to see if maybe they, they you know, replace Guerrero and kind of play with Marius Wolf in more of a, um, like a further back role, or if, you know, they take out Jaden Sancho, which I can't believe they're going to do. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, we'll, we'll see. I think right now it's obviously a big confidence boost for Christian, you know, getting an assist and a goal um, in the same game as, you know, as a substitute is, is fantastic. You really can't hope for, for anything else. So, We'll, we'll see what ne- next week holds. You know, Dortmund have to continue to win. You know, Bayern's really putting the pressure on them to score and um, and win games, not only score, but win games. So 
Lucian Favre kind of has to roll with the hot hand, and maybe you know the hot hand now is Christian. So. I like that. Exciting time for Pulisic and an exciting Bundesliga title race. Finally. Yeah, really. It's been uh, it's been too long, so <laughs> we needed some more action in uh, in Germany, and we're getting it this year. So that's uh, that's great. And obviously, we'll we'll let you guys know next week, and hopefully, we're talking about another good performance from Christian. But now, let's go over to a situation that's kind of been brewing for the past few weeks, Pat. And what would that be? That's right. And the trouble in paradise, which I mentioned earlier, is uh, unfortunately Tim Weah, um, no longer Team Weah, Austin. <laughs> uh, but we'll get into that in a little bit. But uh, just to kind of highlight his uh, you know, most recent performance, he was a he subbed on the 78th minute, I believe, in a 0-0 draw against Aberdeen. Uh, Celtic still comfortable at the top of the table there. But um, I guess some of the bigger highlights with the club is um, Brendan Rodgers uh, left, departed for Leicester City, and now it, uh, the new uh, manager, uh, as of now, is Neil Lennon. And, um, you know, ever since that move, Rodgers was kind of the one that brought uh, Tim in Austin. And, uh, you know, obviously now he's gone and there's a new manager and changes are pretty tough for someone that's coming in uh, second half of the season on loan for a team that's, you know, again, still in first place. But, you know, I think Rangers are only maybe eight, seven or eight points behind, which um, you never know if you mess around with the lineups, you could easily blow those points away. So maybe he's playing more conservative, but... Um, just kind of, I guess, want to know your thoughts too on a uh, on the situation. Yeah, we were kind of talking a little bit off air about uh, just what's going on there at Celtic, and I'm not 100 percent sure. It's it's kind of a weird situation. He went from being a player that they rotated into that starting lineup on a consistent basis, and also you know brought off the bench pretty much every game for a period of time, and now he's made what like one substitute appearance in the past like three games or something, three or four games. Yeah, something so, like that. He's been on the 18. I think even um, – I have to look, look back again, but there might have been even an instance where he wasn't even in the 18 and one. But the last few games he has been in the 18, but just not used. Yeah. And what were you – you were telling me something off air the about the player he's kind of uh, usually been replaced for, like coming on for as a sub and also starting certain games. It was like Oliver Burke was kind of the player that they're going with now. And also- right. Yeah. Yeah. So the, yeah, those are, yeah, those are good, uh, good points to bring up because, uh, yeah, it looks like, um, initially when he was subbing in, they were, they were kind of playing Tim either, you know, that first in line, um, you know, almost like a center forward position there, um, as that one lone, uh, striker, you could say, uh, for Burke, but then also kind of subbing in for Sinclair on the flank there. Um, so he had, you know, kind of interchangeable with those guys. And I, I know Sinclair is, almost a Celtic veteran. He's been there for a while. So uh, kind of hard to displace. Um, pretty, pretty solid, uh, you know, career. And he's doing pretty well in the, obviously for Celtic, but uh, Burke again is an interesting case. Um, I know, you know, a little bit about him um, with Leipzig. I think you mentioned off air, but he's a 21 year old West Brom Loney. And he's had a couple of good performances where he's, you know, kind of subbed on. I think he made impacts and goals or assists and then has kind of won this, this starting spot for the past few games. And um, I know there's another player you wanted to mention too, that uh, kind of has been in the mix as well with uh, Tim Weah's position. Yeah. It seemed like kind of um, when Tim went on loan or, or came to Celtic on loan, the one player that kind of saw his playing time diminish was uh, Odsun Edouard, another player who I guess came from PSG is now fully a Celtic player as of, I think last year, but he's like a, another striker that's kind of similar to Tim Weah, um, kind of pacey, a little, little bit big, athletic. Um, also has a little bit of finesse and, and, and touch. But he was a player that I feel, um, just looking back over their, their rosters from before um, the winter transfer window, he, he seemed like the player that Tim Weah kind of froze out a little bit or the player that, you know, Brendan Rodgers seemed to prefer um, after Tim came on loan. But recently, he's been coming on and having a pretty good performance. I think it's something like three goals in his last like four uh, appearances or something to that effect as a sub and also as a starter. So that might be another player that's kind of um, taken some of his minutes away. Yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, very good points. Yeah, it seems like there's a few players here in the mix. And again, it's tough with a – you're coming into – not to just go backtrack to the start of the loan, but – you know, a team that has been a champion for, I don't know how many, six, seven plus seasons, uh, your first right now. 
you know, you have some players that have been there for a while. You have a lot of these, you know, strong players just dominating in the, the SPL. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure what, uh, what, what's going on behind the scenes, Austin. It's, it's again, it's very, very uncertain and there's, there's nothing really that we've seen or I've seen from even Tim Weah's, you know, social media accounts or anything like that, just kind of indicating any, any issues. I just haven't heard anything, honestly. Right. And there was that one altercation he had after a game, I think it was against Kilmarock uh, a few weeks ago. Yeah, I believe That's, it was. Yeah. Some people say may have caused, you know, some uh, backlash behind the scenes, but nothing like too substantive on that. And it, it was, you know, after the final whistle, it was a play, young player, you know, getting a little bit uh, riled up, would you say, after a game that, you know, was a very passionate game from start to finish. So I don't, I don't think that would be a reason why all of a sudden they would just stop, you know, playing him or, um, you know, not, not like at least getting him into games as a substitute. It, it seems like he's not even coming on for games. I know he came yeah. on this past weekend, but that was, I think, the first time in a few games. So Yeah, the first, yeah. Yeah, that's a good, po- good point, Austin. Yeah, the first time in a few games, and so that that's interesting. Maybe we'll we'll see him more, um, you know, as the season kind of ends here. Um, <laughs> right. But again, kind of kind of concerning because you know this this kind of loan spell, the second half loan spell, is, it seemed like the start of it was very promising with some goals and assists. He was you know, playing fantastic um, football there in Scotland, and now again, not to kind of repeat myself, but it just. So, you know something something behind the scenes something happened we're not we're not aware of yeah and it, it's even weirder i'm gonna bring this up but i might this might be a little bit of a weird tangent or a weird uh like like example of where I, I, we both feel like something might be going on behind the scenes but in the starting lineup cards that um celtic put out for each game they used to list uh timothy way as timo way when you know he was going on loan I know we were uh, joking about it, Pat. I think the first time we saw it, we were like, oh, that's kind of interesting. Yeah, I like that. I'm glad you're bringing this up. <laughs> yeah. And now recently, as of like, I think it was like the past three games maybe, um, he's now listed as Timothy Wea. So it's it's almost like like the, the, the club is kind of taking a weird stance against him. But I, I don't want to read too much into, you know, how a, a name appears on a, on a line of cards. So... Maybe I'm maybe I am reading way too into that, but it, yeah, it's yeah. weird. Why would you do something to like get the fans invested in a player, and uh, especially a player that's only there for six months, and then kind of stop it mid-season or after he hasn't played well? Unless you know the fans in Scotland are just that harsh, and you know unless he's you know really playing well, then we're all behind him, and if not, then screw him. <laughs> yeah, honestly, but, like I don't understand that. And again, maybe yeah, like you said, maybe we're looking into it too much. But also, just that—that's something there. That's literally the only kind of thing we can almost look into at this point. Um, you know, the programs, and you know, um, yeah. Hopefully, we'll uh, we'll monitor the situation here, Austin. And again, hopefully, we'll turn more of these substitute appearances at the end of the season into the starts, and he lifts that Scottish trophy. <laughs> right. Yeah. If he could get a trophy out of it, you know, that would be great. There's nothing wrong with that. That would be a second year for him. In a row with the trophies. So. Yeah, nothing wrong with that, Austin. He's a winner. <laughs> That'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah. And hopefully we get to see him in March. We'd love to see right. Tim Weah in the uh, in the March camp, and maybe we could get an interview. Not us, but maybe you know, as a collective here, we could get an interview from him about his time at Celtic and see if there's you know anything he has to say about what's been going on. Yeah, it would be really good to get some insight. Uh, you know, as this uh, you know this March camp kind of rolls around, these friendlies come on. Uh, you know, this, these next two friendlies because, yeah, we'd like to hear something from him, you know. Maybe uh, he's just working hard in training and uh, keeping, you know, his trying, yeah, keeping his head low, working hard, trying to regain that spot. We don't know. So uh, more to monitor that uh, in the weeks coming up here. So uh, you don't want to miss an episode. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but, Definitely. <laughs> but uh, shifting uh, back over to the Bundesliga, Austin, uh, one of your uh, you know favorite players, uh I would say in the midfield, but almost he plays almost every position. <laughs> That's right, and that would be Weston McKinney. So Weston started and played 90 minutes in Schalke's 4-2 loss again this weekend, but he did have an assist on Schalke's first goal on the day, which is a really nice headed pass um, on the counter for Schalke to Breland Bolo, who finished the ball great for the first goal for Schalke. And it was, uh, yeah, it was a really impressive header. Um, directed it perfectly right into the past 
right into the path of Briel and Bolo. Um, and yeah, it was, it was a, for, for Weston, at least it was an okay day. It was, it was a pretty good day. You know, he, he didn't really put a pass wrong. I would say there, there might've been a few passes that, that weren't, um, that weren't, you know, 100% accurate, but overall he made a very positive impact on the game. But unfortunately, just Schalke cannot seem to find a way to, to stop letting goals in. And, and yeah. I mean, maybe um, – like, I don't I don't think Wes McKinney in this game was really at fault for <laughs> any of the things that, that happened. And, so you would say he's, he was one of the better players on the pitch, right? Yeah, just from, from watching the game myself, I, I thought he played a pretty good game. Um and also, I think on FootMob it was, he had a rating of 7.9, which was the best by far out of any of the midfielders um, for Schalke. I think the other two ratings were like 5.9 and, and 6.1, I think. Um, so it's just, it's just, it seems like Schalke just cannot seem to, um, anytime a, an, an opposing team gets into the box on them, they always just seem to get a really good opportunity. And it's, yeah, it's just, it's just disappointing. But, you know, Weston at least is kind of rising above it and looking good in his performances, which is kind of hard to say, like we've, we've talked about <laughs> whenever you watch Schalke. So. Yeah, and that just shows you how, you know, even a player that you know that stands out when you're watching him performances, even during the bad times, it shows, um, you know, how important he is to Schalke and how, you know, special of a player it seems like he's really becoming um, if he's still making an impact. Yeah, and I, I definitely think like those two games where he didn't play because of injury, like his presence was clearly felt, or his his lack of presence, I guess, was clearly felt. And those were, you know, horrible losses where they got destroyed. And this game could have been like that if he wasn't on the field. Obviously, you know, he did have an impact directly on one of the goals, but he seemed to be one of the only midfielders who was was winning balls and kind of going forward and and playing somewhat confidently, where some of the other players were playing a little bit more timid and we're, we're called out for it. So, yeah. I wonder if this has anything to do with their, the champions league. Um, is that, <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I mean, I mean, we'll find out they play, uh, I, I think it's in city on Wednesday, I believe. I or, think you're right. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah. I think it's Wednesday. So yeah. I mean, maybe it's them looking ahead, but this is now three losses in a row. So they got to get something going here if they want to, you know, not be, in that relegation playoff position by the end of the season. I think they are still safe from relegation or like direct relegation, but uh, Stuttgart's slowly putting together some performances. I know they lost this weekend to Dortmund, but they've, they've been a team that have kind of come alive here in the second half of the, the Bundesliga season. So they gotta, they gotta, you know, look out for, for, uh, you know, the teams below them and look over their backs a little bit. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's interesting. We need a uh, McKinney to to do everything, score some goals, uh, save some, block some shots. <laughs> yeah, and and speaking of of I guess doing everything and also talking about stats, he now has six assists for the entire season at with Schalke in all competitions, which is first on the team. So it kind of just shows how much of a, a midfield presence he's he's really been for Schalke this year, going forward and then also defending and being a presence physically. So yeah, so so not so great for uh, Schalke, but um, pretty good, uh, you know, solid year by year for uh, McKinney here. Yeah, he's definitely cemented a place in that in that starting lineup and has cemented a place in the Schalke organization. I would say I think he's one of their most important players going forward, um, depending on what happens this year. So that's uh, that's always great. You always want a, a player being a uh, you know a figure figurehead or like a. Um, yeah, like a figurehead of a yeah, really. club in the top five leagues. So that's uh, it's fantastic. So now let's uh, yeah, let's move on and let's go to uh, I guess a player coming back from Europe and playing in MLS now. And Pat, who would that be? And that is now that we have the pronunciation right, I believe Kenny Say. <laughs> um, Finally, third time's the charm. <laughs> third time's the charm, Austin. Yeah. So um, yeah, just talk about a little about him. He. Uh, he made a move from Anderlecht to F FC uh, Cincinnati on loan. Um, and he actually, uh, I believe uh, we were talking about this off air, had his uh, MLS debut this uh, past weekend with an assist and, uh, and, yeah. and a draw there. But And I also made the MLS Team of the Week, I believe. Yeah, he was on the bench, I believe. Okay. So Nice. Well, that that's obviously a good start. Um, sad to say one of our uh, Yaz are, are moving uh, you know, stateside, so we won't have uh, – 
to monitor him as, as much. But um, yeah, I think uh, just to kind of highlight on his time in Europe, Austin, he, you know, he put together a pretty, you know, respectable uh, European career with uh, you know, his, his ventures all over in Europe and mainly in Belgium, um, you know, with, I believe it was uh, Ghent, correct? Right. Because mm -hmm. of Ghent, but uh, yeah, Ghent as well as uh, Anderlecht, where he went on loan there before and then, you know, moved there full time, I think, for the you know beginning of 2018. And he's been just kind of marred by injuries, uh, you know, with his time there. He's he's put together some good performances, but I think he's had some serious, I believe there's some knee injuries, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, which is never good. Never good. Pretty important, uh, you know have uh, legs in soccer. <laughs> right. <laughs> Not right. <wrong. laughs> Not right. But yeah, um, so he, I want to just, you know, highlight this stat too, only 29 appearances, um, you know, with Anderlecht. So he, you know, once he kind of returned from this other injury, most recently he kind of fell out of the starting lineup and it seemed like this was a good opportunity. I think I saw an interview um, from him um, and he mentioned, you know, he met with, I think it was the technical director from Cincinnati and he's excited about this new MLS team and to be a focal point and be that creative midfielder they need, um, sound like a really good opportunity for him to, to come back to the States as well. So, yeah, it's an interesting opportunity. I, you know, I think he could do well at FC Cincinnati and like we saw over the weekend, he, he came on and made a, a really good impact in that game against Atlanta United. And had a nice through ball. So if he can continue to be, a, like, hopefully make his way into the starting lineup for Cincinnati and kind of be a player that they rely upon to create chances for them, then I don't see why moving back to MLS is, you know, any worse than sitting the bench at Anderlecht or, you know, playing from time to time. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree, Austin. And, and you know, again, like, he's had a pretty solid career there. I think he's, he's 25 now. Um, so okay. he's still kind of, you know, barring any injury setbacks he's still got really you know strong years ahead of him this is kind of the prime where you know maybe he can kind of almost reinvent himself uh, back in the mls and um i you know i i, I want to get your take on this too but i think uh kenny's safe um <laughs> he, he he could be you know um someone for the national team going forward maybe in some of the gold cup or friendlies i don't i don't see him ever being you know on that world cup you know, starting, you know, roster, maybe in included in the roster, but not the, you know, the starting 11. Um, I just want to get, maybe get your take as I think he could kind of be one of those players that we could see in and out sometimes with the team. Yeah, I completely agree. I don't, I don't think he'll ever be, you know, a, a first team choice if everything goes to plan with the players we have right now in the pool. Um, but he, he could definitely be a good alternative and, and a good, kind of B team player if there is ever a need for a B team, like in a gold cup or something. Right. Um, so yeah, I, I completely agree. I think yeah. he, he works very hard and that was pretty evident in that uh, game against Atlanta United. He, he really was, you know, running all around the field and, and playing hard compared to some of the other players on the field. So um, if he can, you know, do that, I'm, I'm fine with seeing him in a, in a USMNT shirt. So. Yeah, I completely agree. All for That's that. And um, yeah, and uh, best of luck to uh, Kenny there as he uh, you know, starts his MLS adventure with a, a new team there. That's um, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, moving on, uh, Austin, to uh, you know, a very intriguing player um, that you know, I don't think we've talked about in a while. Yeah, and that would be another player moving back to MLS from Europe. And this time it would be uh, Gideon Zalalem. So Gideon now will be playing for Sporting Kansas City. And this move was made permanent, I believe it was on Monday. So this will be basically, um, I think it's a really good move for him. Um, I think Sporting Kansas City is a team that kind of fits what type of player he is. And, you know, Sporting Kansas City like to, to play possession, keep the ball. Um, you know, they're very, very clever, like a very smart playing team. Peter Vermes does a great job with them, getting them all on the same page and playing together and and you know, attacking po opponents very um, precisely and, and, like, very organized. Um, so I think Gideon could fit really well into this team. Obviously, it'll take some time to kind of get him back up to speed. He's been out ever since the 2017 uh, U-20 World Cup when he went down with that knee injury, although he has been training and playing in some reserve matches for Arsenal over the past six months or so. So um, that's good, and hopefully that'll help you know give him a head start on his time there at Sporting KC. But I definitely think there'll be an an adjustment period for for Gideon before he 
really sees, you know, major MLS minutes, maybe some time with Swoop Park Rangers, um, the USL team that Spring Kansas City has. But Yeah, those are, those are good options, that? Austin. I was just going to mention, uh, you know, briefly, it's just, again, another player that just has had some very serious injuries, too. Yeah, really disappointing. <laughs> Really, really sad because I was I was very excited about him, uh, especially after the 2015 U20 World Cup. I know that one video on Twitter has kind of been uh, – has resurfaced recently that shows just a fantastic performance against, I believe it was New Zealand, where he just looked dominant. Like that was the best way to explain it. He just looked dominant. He dominated the game, um, was a very smart passer of the ball, um, was creative yeah. and confident. He almost and looked also, like uh, like like he's kind of orchestrating everything, you know. Yeah, that's that's exactly what it was. He he was that deep, uh, well, I guess deep lying creative playmaker, and you know, like like we've talked about, Pat, we don't have enough of any of those types of creative players. So, um, yeah, it'd be great to see him really find that form again, find that confidence to play. You know, some of those those through ball through balls he was playing in that video were fantastic, and if we could see, you know, a player kind of do that in that eight or ten position um yeah I, I would i would be all for him you know maybe getting another opportunity with the the men's national team although i do think that's some time away he's got to kind of get on the field and, and play consistently right. before any of those um rumors start happening or you know whispers of those of getting a call up happen so um yeah, I think it's a good move. I, I'm really excited to see him. I, I think Sporting Kansas City will give him a fair opportunity. I think there'll be a team, or yeah, I guess there'll be a team that that really tries to cultivate him and get the best out of his his talent. And that's the best thing for Gideon. It's a lot better than going to a team like like Orlando or some team and like I don't even know, like the the Erster to VC, like where he was on loan. Yeah, V V V Venlo. I think the he's had right. serious struggles there. So. Yeah, so I, I'm I'm happy. I'm I'm really excited to see what he can do, and hopefully he can stay healthy. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, yeah, wish wish all the best for uh, uh, Getty in there, and yeah, just again, so much you know, so much potential there. He's still, I think you mentioned he's 22 now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I mean, yeah, he he still has some time to kind of get back on track and uh, you know, become a really good uh, you know MLS player. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, so that's that's all I wanted to say about Gideon. Uh, now let's go over to our final player for today, Pat, and who would that be? And that's uh, none other than uh, Dwayne Holmes. Uh, and, and Dwayne, uh, again, got the, uh, the start after, uh, you know, not uh, the last two games uh, not starting um, just because of the 4 nothing thrashing Aston Villa gave them. Um, but this time around, uh, Dwayne was involved in a 1-1 draw against Sheffield Wednesday. Um, so that kind of still keeps Derby... Um, you know, up in sixth, so they're you know pushing for that exciting uh, you know spot to get up to the prem here um, with the playoffs in sight. So it's exciting stuff. And again, just to kind of highlight where Dwayne was, um, Derby's been playing mainly a, a four-two-three-one, and I think the last few games we've seen you know Dwayne either sub in or start in um, you know that midfield three right in the the center of the pitch there, um, as Harry Wilson's kind of floated out to the uh, I think it's either the left or right there with him. Um, so it's exciting to kind of see, see Dwayne find more of, uh, you know, his niche and find that more consistent, um, you know, spot on the pitch for uh, Lampard. And I think at Austin, it was, um, it was either Scred or one of our, uh, you know, uh, great, uh, you know, soccer followers and that post some great content um, that mentioned that Dwayne, he thinks that Dwayne's best position is exactly kind of in that, that central midfield role um, or, you know, that the, the cam midfield role. So, I think that is where, you know, he's obviously been playing with Derby and where we're going to see him moving forward. But it's still none, nonetheless to say if he does get a call up, which I really hope he does, um, you know, soon, uh, that he could either play on the flank as well, which we've seen that um, from Derby County. So it seems like he's a very dynamic, uh, flexible player, very creative, a lot of speed and pace. So, um, you know, th that's kind of uh, what's going on with Dwayne Austin. Yeah, I yeah, that's that sounds great. I mean, we we need more of those creative playmakers. So, if that's you know what he's what he's good at doing, I'm I'm really excited to see him in a in a USA jersey. So, yeah, yeah. Let's hope let's hope it's in May or excuse me, not May. Let's not wait till May. Let's wait till March. That's and, right. Uh, that's yeah. right. And and I don't want to say anything too much, but I'm not sure when the rosters are officially being released. They should but, be, um, be released this week. Or that's that's what we right. 
So, so uh, you know, fingers crossed for Dwayne. I, I think he's really earned it, Austin. You know, I don't want to repeat myself, but we've been talking about him a lot, and he's had some really good performances, starting and subs, just making a very big impact, uh, you know, for a top team in the championship, I'd say. Right. Yeah, that's all you can really ask for, a team that's, like you said, fighting for promotion. So that's, uh, yeah, more great stuff from Dwayne. And uh, like always, we'll keep you guys updated. So now let's go over to Quick Kicks. All right, guys, it's that time of the show. It's your favorite. It's my favorite. You don't want to miss a single bit of Quick Kicks. Let's see you could test Dwayne Miller. It's out to the over the wall. All right, guys, so to start off quick kicks, we're going to head over to England, uh, where DeAndre Yedlin played the full 90 in midfield uh, for a comeback win for Newcastle against Everton. That's right, and going over to Germany, we want to let you guys know that Tyler Adams started and played 73 minutes for Leipzig in their 0-0 draw with Augsburg this weekend. And Austin, heading over to the Netherlands for one of our fan favorite strikers, Andrea Novakovic. Uh, he played the full 90 but unfortunately, uh, Fortuna Sittard lost 4-0 to Ajax. And going back over to Germany, Sebastian Soto scored yet another goal for Hanover's U19s this weekend. However, it was in an unfortunate 2-1 loss. And heading over to the championship, Anthony Robinson, uh, back from injury, his first full start back, uh, was involved in an unfortunate 3-2 loss to Reading. And uh, going back to Germany, uh, Zian Jones had an assist in Schalke's U19's 1-0 win over the weekend. In some uh, juvenile A action over in La Liga, Austin, uh, Conrad De La Fuente, one of our uh, you know, prized uh, youth uh, attackers here, played against another uh, fellow American, and that is Akil Watts um, for Mallorca. So it was an exciting battle in La Liga there. That's pretty cool to see. And uh, going over to England, uh, Charlie Kelman started his very first game for Southend United this weekend, and he played 73 minutes in a 2-2 draw with Blackpool. So go on, Charlie. That's right, Austin. Go on, Charlie. And uh, you know, uh, CCV, uh, staying in England, played the full 90 in a, a 1-0 loss to Norwich City there. That's right. And finally, we just want to let you guys know of two uh, players uh, that were called up to the U23 team. Uh, that'll play uh, friendly matches at the end of March, and that would be Emmanuel Sabi as well as Eric Palmer Brown. So it'll be exciting to see who else is a part of this roster. And Austin, some uh, also more exciting news for the U20s. Um, we have Christian Kappas and uh, Jonathan Amen, um, you know, selected for the rosters. So uh, congrats to both of them, and uh, we're looking for uh, big things going forward. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel down below. And as always, make sure to check out our Instagram, Twitter pages. We always have a lot of great content going on. That's right. And we'll be active around this, uh, this roster release that's hopefully releasing before this video. And, uh, you know, let us, let us know on, uh, on Twitter or Instagram, you know, what you think of the roster. Because um, no, I know we're going to have a lot of opinions, Pat. That's right. We're going to have a lot of opinions, a lot of the things to say. And all these players, you know, just kind of finding their way to the new era, the new Burhalter era. Um, it's all going to lead to something, Austin. That path will lead to somewhere. That's right. We have a few more years to wait, but one day we will win the World Cup.